Hi everyone, in this video I want to give a recap of matrix multiplication. Given the importance of matrix multiplication in machine learning, especially in artificial neural networks and deep learning, where matrix multiplication builds an essential operation, such as in fully connected layers or even the very important attention mechanism that is used in transformers. So understanding matrix multiplication is a prerequisite to other complex operations. If you are already familiar with matrix multiplication, that's great. So feel free to skip this video and watch my next video on attention mechanism with the link in the description. So first let's define our notation. We say that A is a matrix of size n by m. And we can represent the dimensions of A with a subscript as shown here, where the first subscript n is the number of rows and the second subscript, m, is the number of columns. For visual learning, we can also represent matrix A as the grid that is shown here with n rows and m columns. So next, let's go over our notation for vectors. We represent vectors using lowercase characters to differentiate them from matrices. Here we have A as a vector of size n, so that means this vector a has n rows, and we define the dimensionality of a with a subscript as shown here. This subscript is similar to how we represented dimensionality of a matrix previously. The first subscript n shows the number of rows, and a vector has only one column. So we can think of a vector as a special matrix that has only one column. Note that the default notation for a vector of size n is to represent it as a subscript n because we know that by default it has only one column and then there is no need to represent the number of columns. But it is easier to track the dimensionalities and check for the validity of a vector matrix multiplication if we show both dimensions like n by 1 in the subscript. So in this video, I represent a vector using the n by 1 subscript notation and encourage you to do that as well for learning and also for avoiding mistakes. Hi everyone. We already saw a vector and said that a vector is a special matrix that has just one column. But we can also have a row vector. A row vector is a special matrix that has just one row. Row vectors are also denoted using the lowercase letters similar to column vectors. For example, here we have B as a row vector of size M, and that means it has M columns. And so we represent its dimensionality using the subscript 1 by M as shown here. So when you read an article or a paper and you see that there is a vector, and they have not specified whether it is a row vector or a column vector, by convention, it is a column vector. So let's put this together. On the left, I'm showing a column vector denoted by A subscript 4 by 1, and on the right, I'm showing a row vector denoted by B subscript 1 by 3. So to summarize vectors, we said that a vector is a special matrix that has just one column or just one row. If it has just one column, that means it is a column vector, and that is the convention. But if it has just one row, that is a row vector. And remember that when you are reading an article or a paper and you see a vector, but they have not specified whether it is columnar or row-wise, by convention, we say that it is a column vector. And finally, we can convert a column vector to a row vector or likewise a row vector to a column vector using the transpose operation. So next, let's look at what is a transpose operation. The transpose operation is a linear transformation that flips a matrix over its diagonal. For example, if we have matrix A with size n by m, meaning that it has n rows and m columns, as it is shown in the left, then 
Transposing matrix A, we get a new matrix with size M by N. And we can represent that using the transpose symbol in the superscript. To get a better understanding of the transpose operation, next let's see some examples of matrices and vectors and transpose them. For the first example, we have matrix A of size 4 by 6. And for applying the transpose operation to this matrix, we take the first row and flip it 90 degrees to get a column vector. And that is the first column of our new matrix. Then we repeat the same thing for other rows. So here we are doing for the second row, now the third row, and the last row. At the end, we get a transpose with dimensions 6 by 4 in the right. Our next example is a column vector V with size 5 by 1. To transpose this matrix, we flip it to get a row vector with dimensions 1 by 5. Therefore, the transpose of a column vector is a row vector. Next, let's transpose a row vector V with size 1 by 5. So we flip this vector and we get a column vector with dimensions 5 by 1. Therefore, when we transpose a row vector, the result will be a column vector. Now, what happens if we apply the transpose twice? If we start from a column vector V of size 4 by 1, the first transpose operation gives us a row vector of size 1 by 4. Then we apply the transpose operation again to this new row vector and the result will be our original column vector with dimensions 4 by 1. So we conclude that if you apply transpose an even number of times like 2, 4, 6 and so on, you will get your original vector back. Same thing for matrices. The dot product is a fundamental building block of matrix multiplication. So before we go to matrix multiplication, we should first understand the concept of dot product. Dot products between two vectors is computed by multiplying each corresponding element and then summing up the products. So mathematically, we can write the dot product in the following notation. Row vector A transpose that has k elements and column vector B that also has k elements. Then using this equation, we can sum up the products between their corresponding elements. But note that we can only perform this operation if both vectors have k elements. In other words, the first row vector must have k elements and the second column vector should also have k elements. So now let's see an example dot product in action. On the left, we have two column vectors u and v and we want to calculate their dot product. So first, we flip u to get the row vector u transpose. Then we can compute the dot product by multiplying corresponding elements and calculate the sum over them. And the result will be a scalar number. Let's take a closer look at the dimensions of the two vectors u transpose and v. The dimensionality of u transpose is 1 by 4 and the dimensionality of v is 4 by 1. Focusing on the two 4s in the middle that I'm highlighting with the red arrow, these two 4 values will get dissolved during the summation. And what remains is 1 by 1, which is a scalar. So far, we have talked about our notations such as vector notation, matrix notation, and also discussed how the transpose operation works, the transpose of a matrix or transpose of a vector. And now we are ready to dive into matrix multiplication. Let's assume we have two matrices named A and B. First, we need to understand that the two matrices involved in this multiplication must satisfy the following condition, and that is, the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. 
In this case, we have the dimensionality of A as n by k and the dimensionality of B is k by n. By writing their dimensions in the subscript, we can look at the middle part as it is highlighted and make sure that they are equal. And why should they be equal? Because these middle dimensions will be involved in dot product and therefore they must be equal. As we learned in the dot product discussion, these middle dimensions will get dissolved and what remains is the n and m. So the result of multiplying matrices A and B will be a new matrix, so let's call it C, which will have dimensionality of n by m. As you have seen in this video several times, using such subscript notation is very useful for understanding two things. One, if the multiplication is a valid operation between the two matrices, and two, for figuring out the dimensionality of the output. So let's look at these four examples and find out the dimensionality of the output matrix. For the first example, we have matrix A, which is 3 by 4, and matrix B, which is 4 by 3. So the middle dimensions 4 will cancel out and we will end up with C 3 by 3. The second example, we take 7 rows from A and 4 columns from B. So the result will be C 7 by 4. The third example is a row vector multiplied by a matrix and the result will be a row vector with dimensionality 1 by 3. And the last example is multiplying two vectors, but note that this is not the same vector dot product that we discussed earlier. The result of this will be in fact a matrix of size 5 by 5. Matrix multiplication involves taking the dot product of each row in the first matrix with each column in the second matrix to produce the corresponding element of the resulting matrix. So let's see how it is done step by step. I have highlighted the first row of matrix on the left and then we go through all the columns of the second matrix on the right. Each time we perform a dot product between the row of matrix A and the column of matrix B and that results in a scalar value in the resulting matrix C. When we finish the dot products of the first row of A and all columns of B, then we move to the second row of matrix A and repeat the same process for all columns of matrix B. The resulting values correspond to the second row of matrix C. We then continue the same process for all other rows of matrix A and at the end, we get the resulting matrix C with n rows and m columns. Let's see another example with known dimensions. Here we have matrix U of size 4 by 3 and matrix V of size 3 by 5. And we know that the resulting matrix will have dimensionality of 4 by 5. So we start by taking the first row of matrix U and go through all the columns of matrix V one at a time and calculate one element of the resulting matrix. After finishing the dot product of the first row of matrix U with all columns of matrix V, we then move on to the second row of matrix U and calculate the dot product of that row with all columns of V. Repeating the same process for the third row and the fourth row of matrix U, so I will fast forward going through all calculations and then we get the resulting matrix R with size 4 by 5. In this video, we covered a few concepts in linear algebra, such as applying the transpose operation on vectors and matrices, concepts such as the vector dot product and matrix multiplication. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and in the next video, I will explain the concept of attention mechanism in transformers. Thanks for watching.